What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and I'm here with the last of my February ICL matches for you all. I know I'm posing this a little bit late, but I actually just found out where this recording was. I thought it was uh, corrupted and I was able to recover it. Now, of course, this is the team featuring Mega Audino. As we see in my opponent in this battle, they're actually going to lead off with Gengar and Mega Metagross. Not a bad lead matcher for me uh, since I decided to bring Aegis Slash and Talonflame. I predicted the Mega Metagross to protect right here. So I decided to just go ahead and attack the Gengar expecting to hit a Sash. Um, but he actually doesn't have Sash, so I was a little bit surprised by that. And I'm going to attack into a Shadow Ball from the Mega Metagross. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate here. I didn't know what to expect from Sand Slash right here, maybe a Rock Slide. Um, because I knew Mega Metagross probably wasn't going to protect when it was trying to use an Earthquake. So I'm just going to switch out here using U-Turn. I'm going to a Scavalier on the off chance as he does Rock Slide. But he surprises me with Sword Stance. I did not see that coming at all. Uh, and Zen Headbutt, fortunately since I switched out into my Escavalier, is not going to do very much damage at all to Escavalier. And here I predicted that he was just going to Earthquake and Protect with the Mega Metagross, and he does do just that. So I'm able to get off a very good amount of damage on the Sand Slash with Mega Horn. Uh, if I were Life Orb or even um, Bandit, of course, that would have definitely taken it out. But I'm holding Lumberry, so I'm not quite able to finish it off. Surprisingly, he hits me with Crush Claw, which lowers my defense, which is definitely going to come into play later on, as he is using physical attackers. Uh, I didn't want to risk missing Meteor, um, Mega Horn again, so I decided to go for Iron Head, of course, to finish off Sand Slash. Now, right here, he hits me with Meteor Mash, and because of the plus, or I'm sorry, because of the minus one in my defense, it does a lot of damage, and that puts me in range for him to take me out with Sylveon. So without that, he definitely would not have been able to take me out, I don't think, without the defense drop. Now, fortunately, since he does decide to attack a Skyvalier, I am able to knock out his Metagross at this time. And since Sylveon is his last Pokemon, uh, I didn't think he'd be able to do too much against me if I went ahead and brought out Talonflame and went for Brave Bird. Now, he does hit me with Dazzling Gleam, but since it is a spread move, even with Aegis Slash's weak defenses, I'm able to live the critical hit and finish him off with a Flash Cannon. So that was actually a pretty good match. Uh, Aegis Slash kind of did most of the heavy lifting there for the most part. And I didn't actually get to use Mega Audino in that battle at all. Now in this match, Audino gets to do a good amount during the battle, but because of hacks, yet again, it doesn't end up really showing its full potential. Uh, I decided to lead Breloom in case he decided to lead with Suicune and another slower Pokemon. But since he leaves with Gengar, the possibility of Icy Wind is pretty high. I didn't want my Sash broken. And if he was going to go for Icy Wind, I definitely wanted the competitive boost on my Melodic. So I decided to Mega Evolve and switch out to Melodic at the same time. Now he surprises me here by going for Sludge Bomb on the would have been uh, Breloom there. He double targeted Breloom, so he was definitely expecting a Sash. Uh, so I am able to get off a free Calm Mine with Audino as I switch to Melodic. Uh, definitely don't mind that at all. And since Sludge Bomb is normally about a 2-hit KO on Audino, with the Calm Mine it's going to be a 3-hit KO, he does surprise me here by going for Snarl, I guess not knowing that Melodic gets competitive as an ability, which is why I really like using it in doubles, um, when, with Intimidate and Snarl and, and to a lesser extent uh, Charm from Priority Users, switching in on those and getting that plus 1 or sometimes plus 2 boost. Uh, is really nice. Now unfortunately right here he does critical hit me with a sludge bomb. We saw how little that did before and uh, that crit just really really sucked at that time. Uh, so now I'm kind of on the back foot here. I was definitely expecting to be able to take out um, the, well rather I was expecting to get a good chunk of health out of the Suicune there with the plus one move. And here I just thought that the Brave Bird was way too obvious. He takes me out with another critical hit sludge bomb. Uh, and that really just sucked, because I was just going to go for Flare Blitz into the Gengar slot, uh, expecting something to come in to take the obvious Brave Bird, but he critical hit me again, so that's unfortunate. And now we're staring down a Mega Kangaskhan and Bereloom, and if I want to win this at this point, I really have to predict correctly. He does uh, not use Fake Out as I expected him to use in this situation. He goes straight for Double Edge, I guess not wanting to give Melodic a chance to have too much breathing room. And at this point, it's probably obvious that I'm not carrying Protect on Melodic. Uh, but with the max HP, max defense investment, I'm easily able to live, return, 
even the parental bond boosted move. And here I'm just hoping that I don't get frozen because I know I have the focus sash to live any hit. Now I really, really needed to take out the Suicune. I needed, I think I needed all five hits from Bullet Seed, which is you have a relatively low probability of that. I get a critical hit on one, but since I only hit three or four since, or three and a half, I guess, since I hit a critical hit on one, I'm not able to do it. I really needed four, uh, but fortunately, I force my opponent into choosing what he wants to live here because I'm able to mock punch the Kangaskhan and Suicune can't really do anything to Melodic so he's forced to Ice Beam my Breloom. Now it would seem that we are down to uh, Recover slash uh, Scald shenanigans, seeing who gets the burn and that type of thing, but I have Toxic so at any point I can put Suicune on a timer and his last Pokemon is Heatran which typically Heatran can't do much to water types unless it's carrying Hidden Power Grass. In this situation, even if he is carrying Hidden Power Grass, if he stays out to attack me with it, it won't one-hit KO me because I took the time to recover up, and I'll be able to one-hit KO him in response because he keeps on giving me the special attack boost with Snarl. Now, since his only coverage move for water types is Earth Power, and he went for a Snarl again, his Heat Train is not going to be able to live, I think at this point it's a plus three, uh, Scald, and so that's definitely going to be able to take out Heatran, and with that many stat boosts, Scald's going to be able to handle Suicune as well, even though it resisted and Suicune is very bulky, so we ended up forfeiting that match. Uh, but Melodic really got to shine right there. Melodic and Audino side by side, I just love that pairing, it's too bad Audino kept on getting critical hit and, and poison and all other stuff, but still, you know, it was, it was fun to use those two together. Now another pairing I really like is Audino and Aegis Slash just because I can protect Audino from spread moves. Um, here I just didn't predict my opponent to be this uh, aggressive the first turn. I thought for sure he'd do some spread type moves, especially knowing that Aegis Slash often carries Wygar, but he goes straight for Shadow Ball and Earthquake, and that finishes Aegis Slash off on turn one. Uh, I am able to get a Calm Mind up which will help me sponge hits from Gengar relatively well. But losing Aegis Slash that early kind of sucks. Now he was probably predicting me to just go straight for a Draining Kiss or some type of Fairy Moon, which is why he switched into Charizard. I decided to hit the Gengar with the Brave Bird before it did anything weird, status moves or or anything like that, or Destiny Bomb, which he actually ends up going for. But since I did not double target Gengar, I ended up keeping my Audino this turn. And for those of you who haven't faced uh, Destiny Bomb Gengar, you kind of just have to play around it. At this point, I know. By regular speed, Talonflame is probably the fastest thing on the field. But since he went for Destiny Bond, I can't attack it on the next turn until he uses another move besides Destiny Bond. So he actually ends up going for Destiny Bond again, resetting the status of it, and I didn't want to attack him. So I just heal pulse my Talonflame to give it a few more attacks um, to hit my opponent with. All of recoil damage was starting to rack up. But now that I've shown him the ability that I have to go for heal pulse, now is a good time to just switch out into Melodic. He does miss the will o -Wisp onto Audino, but since it's not toxic, not really that big a deal. Uh, probably would have been better for him to Sludge Bomb. Uh, I am able to get Melodic in on an Ice-type move, which of course is resisted, so that was a prime time to switch it in. And now I get a chance to go for offense one more time. I was still afraid to attack, to attack the Gengar, just because uh, right now he's the fastest thing on the field. I don't have Talonflame out. So I'm going to leave Gengar again for a little while until I have an opportunity to bring back in Talonflame which I do right here. I did not want to have my Melodic uh, Encored into the Toxic type move. And he actually goes for a Helping Hand boosted uh, Shadow Ball right in the Talonflame. But as you can see, that crit in the last battle definitely mattered because Talonflame is able to take the Helping Hand boosted um, Shadow Ball. So it definitely would have needed a crit to take it, take me out with a Sludge Bomb. So I now that he finally went for the attacking move though, that means I can now attack him without losing my Pokemon. He's at such low HP that Talonflame won't even be KO'd by the recoil. So as he brings in his Mammal Swine uh, on a switch there, I'm able to take out his Gengar and bring his Mammal Swine down to critical HP. And I'm just going to take out the Mammal Swine because generally Whimsicott can't really do anything to Audino. I guess it could encore me into something. Uh, he actually goes for a Worry Seed there to get rid of my ability, but that's kind of pointless at this point. So I'm able to have three victories in a row right there in those videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching Mega Audino in action. It certainly was a pleasure to use it, have that as a new battling partner. Uh, 
Let me know what mega you guys would like for me to use in VGC coming up, uh, not or if there's another international challenge. Let me know so I can start building a team around it. Otherwise, I will be talking to you all later. Bye-bye, guys.